Okay. Lack of rigor. It was hard. It was tough, really. It hurts a lot. We were fried. <laughs> but as you, as you can imagine, the first reaction of one is like they pissed up. Jesus, mad, mad as hell. But, but later you think and say, okay, I am criticizing these guys because they have this very old fashioned approach to do changes in systematics. Now they are, they are criticizing us for being <laughs> almost paleolithic in our approach to, to, to do research. Why don't we take this as a present and it's an opportunity to test if what we've done is better than they have done? Okay, so Van didn't look at this. We made the first survey, a first pass of all the taxonomy based on morphological characters. And there are sets of researchers doing specific revisions of each of the taxa. Just, just want to show you again what's, what's, the, what's the key of his critic. List of taxa that are apparently diagnosable, but without providing supporting documentation. Can you imagine a revision of 1,000 species providing careful documentation of each of the cases? The FT taxonomy will be like this thick. We are, we are not able to, to obtain information of any species. But fortunately, we're not alone. We, we, have a, we have colleagues, we have students that are working on the obtention of that kind of documentation based on different characters. But at the rate it was being done till the, this paper was prepared, the rate of apparition and of publication of these taxonomic revisions was 1.8 per year. Not revising the full of, documenting the full of fauna we have analyzed will take another 75 years. We cannot, we cannot wait for that, right? We will be part of the checklist committee. Okay, there's nothing to do with it. So we took the opportunity and say, okay, let's test our hypothesis against them and see how well we performed. So Tan and I sat in his office at the University of Kansas. It was during my sabbatical, I don't remember. I think it was. And took all the, all the examples in which we generated a new taxonomy for a biological species and for those for which new information has been generated recently, especially based on genetic data. Remember, we don't have genetic data in, in an approach. So we, we, this way, assure that we have extra information from another source, so, another so, source of characters. And we rate ourselves. For example, we have one species, X is a red wing blackbird. We decided that the, the red-winged blackbird is composed of two species. And this guy, a friend of us, Keith Barker, made a DNA work and showed us that these two taxa genetic, genetically are the same. So that means that we missed the shot. So we obtained a, a qualification of zero. Failed. F. <laughs> We have another, 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 another group, Amasilia rutila, it's a hummingbird. We decided that we have two, 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 two taxa. In this case, we were right. So we have a, an A plus. And, but we were able, we, 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 rated all, we rated us in different aspects. So we are able to, to evaluate the differences between our our approach and our and, and, and theirs. And I'll show you a few examples. La regamos 
That means in Spanish, we totally failed. We were wrong as hell. And this is, this is a very interesting point that, that goes on what he was saying a moment ago. We have taxa that are heavily differentiated morphologically, but when you add another chunk of information, you find that this differentiation is not corresponding with the morphological differentiation. This is the case of the junco, the brown-eyed junco. This is a very widespread species in North America that presents all these morphological uh, units. But a very, a very careful genetic work by Borja Milá, a researcher at Museo de Ciencias Naturales in Madrid, showed us that the variation, the color variation is not due to evolutionary differentiation is due to ecology or another reason. So we cannot recognize several species in this... I don't agree with you. Bueno, pero en esta parte sí. No, the markers they looked at didn't detect evolutionary no, differentiation. Okay. The markers that they looked at didn't show, didn't well, 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 this is... I mean, there may be somewhere in the genome, and same with, with Brian's fruit flies, somewhere in the genome there may be a marker that's very distinct. Okay, so, somewhere, but in this, in this, exactly in this, in this set of information, we have no differences. Yeah, Maybe, uh-huh. That yet. Yet, yet, okay. I, I will change to yet. Ching <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay, yet. Okay. We had some more or less okay. In this case, in, this, in the case of this woodpecker, we said it, it, it's going to be three units. It's going to be four units. We detected three, so more or less it's okay. Sometimes, and it's, it falls well into the, the example that Tan, Tan just mentioned. We missed because the evolutionary differentiation as compared to the morphological differentiation is so big that we were not able to detect until we get to, to the genetic data. This is a complex, the chestnut-headed brush finch, a Ramon Brunei nuca. We said it's too and the truth is that we have, at least in Middle America, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one new to science, a new species, never, ne never, ne never described before. So in this case, we, we were wrong, but in, the, in a good way, we were able to detect a huge amount of evolutionary differ differentiation. And, and, we were and we were right in several instances. The two canets, this, this group of wrens. But also, when, when applying another set of information, another set of characters, we also demonstrated that in some instances we were right. This is the, the, the songs of the three units of the, of the wren. And so this example is passing the test with two kinds of, of, extra, of extra information. Right. More examples, more examples. Okay. In summary, when we did this first pass to our first pass with, with extra information, we know that of the 135 species that we analyzed the first time, 28 of those will have particular studies. Of the 323 evolutionary species, 72 have studies. Of 28 complexes that we split, 22 were correct. Of the 72 evolutionary species that we 
we defined 52 were correct with new evidence, and 41 of those were reciprocally monophyletic in terms of genetics. So what do you think? Was, was our effort good? Was worth it? You don't care? I don't. I, I, me, me, need, me neither. No. <laughs> no. I, I, think, I, I think it's a very good exercise. I think, I think it's very good. Because we, we, were able to, we were able to demonstrate that even with this, this fir that first pass with morphology, we were right in recognizing units, ev evolutionary units that ca will pass the test. Some will, some didn't pass yet. <laughs> <laughs> What's the relevance for biodiversity? What's the relevance for diversity and endemies we have seen? One, one first touch. It, it is relevant also because we were able to detect geographic patterns that are shared by different groups of species and that belong to different taxa and higher levels. For example, it, it, during our past we detected this pattern, old world, new world versus whole world in, in these groups. This has been reviewed recently and split by other people. This has been reviewed recently also. So, and within, within Mexico, look, the, the, the important thing here is that, that you check that several species, a hummingbird, an owl, a uh, hawk, a falcon, and another hummingbird share the same pattern. So it is, that, that is important for rec the recognition of biodiversity. Again, a toucan, uh, a, a, pa a passerine, a, a cotinga, a cuckoo, a, a, cr a jay. We, we of, of course, we have Heavy, uh, heavily and very highly differentiated populations inhabiting the islands. And we have a saying in Mexico. I, I, I will use some of our traditional sayings and trying to translate. This saying say, means something like, nobody knows who you work for. That means you can be doing work for yourself, but finally you benefit Another, another person. Is that more or less understandable? Every single time that we do a, a, a deep review of a species, con a species complex, we give a present of a new species, an endemic, endemic species, to Costa Rica. <laughs> that is really disgusting because it, it is a way to give these guys the opportunity to say, we are the most, the most diverse country of the world, but they are like well, two hectares. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, that, that, that makes happy our neighbors, the ticos. Well. How these approaches are affecting the general geographic patterns of diversity. It's very easily seen in, in, this, in, in these maps. This, these are, I, I will use these maps later in the other part of my talk. But what we see here is a distribution of the number of species in the country. And I will say this is the same pattern of the distribution of species richness using FT and using biological species concept. It's the same. So that means that our efforts were useless. Why do you think it's the same? I want to say geographic 
geographical or botanical um, similarities. So you're seeing what I would assume to be kind of desert in the north, which has less species, whether it's avifaunal or whatever, and going south, which my understanding of the country is more tropical, more um, habitat available, niche availability, etc. Et However, my, my, my question was, why the number of species in each grid for total uh, for, the, for the total species richness is the same using the two approaches. It's because I'm lazy? <laughs> no, it's because, remember, most of the splits we, we've done correspond to geographic breaks too. So the total number of species in one site, in one particular site, doesn't change. Because it's only the species A now is A plus. The species B is the species B plus. What happens with endemism? What do you expect? The same thing? Now we are mapping a subset of, of that species richness. That is the endemics. And here we have differences. This is endemism for, for biological species concept. This is endemism for FT. Why? Am I right? Or? Remember, we, this is a subset. And so now the subset of species that I'm mapping is much larger. Total number of species will not change, but, but this subset of endemic species has increased, almost doubled. So what we have here is, look at the, at the geographic patterns, this, this whatever is the pattern, but look at the, Look at the way I don't use all this. Look at the numbers. In general, the, the endemism is concentrated here because we are far from the borders. But the figure of endemism changes. And especially now we have places where up to 74 endemic species are concentrated. And this is very relevant for biodiversity. This is very relevant for conservation. Let's look at the figure when we select special, special areas. This means this is the number of endemic species recognized by the AUU checklist committee. This is the number of species recognized by FT. And you see the changes. Isla Guadalupe, very far in the Pacific, three versus eight. The Cape region, well, it's our Cape region, no, not this Cape region, it's our Cape region. Three versus nine. The Tres Marias Island and, uh, and islands that, a set of islands that have been isolated for long from mainland. Zero versus eight. And yeah, you, can, uh, you can see the different differences in, in, this, in these numbers. It is relevant for conservation issues. Now, this is part of Town's undergraduate. No, no, <laughs> this was your PhD. Yes, thank you. Once you know that this taxon is in fact two taxa, and you map the distribution, you realize that this one now is distributed in a very tiny part of a isolated, oh gee, what was, of, of, of an isolated mountain, this, this, this Aphelocoma guerrerensis works, uh, works, uh, lives in, in pristine cloud forest, what may represent a problem. And if you analyze, uh, you do a comparison 
of what's the level of protection of the, of the different uh, under different approaches what we have found is that when up, when you apply the dif uh, and the alternative species concept you find that many of the forms ha have attributes of area and uh, habitat uh, habitat restriction that deserve to be included in any of the endangered species lists. So it's, it is relevant, again. <laughs>